Hello, everybody. Hi, guys. Another Welcome to another episode. Get Real with Real Estate with John and Melissa Steele, Team Steele San Diego Homes. We're I'm excited not, to be coming at you today. Yeah, I'm not sure what episode we're on at this point, but um, we're going to be talking about HOAs today. Yeah. So, Home Owners Associations. Uh, yeah. So, the fees, uh, what, what an are, HOA does, why, why they're they there, exist. all that stuff. We're going to be talking about HOAs, a whole bunch. Yeah, and HOAs come up for us a lot. They are something that we run into with a variety of different properties. So, it's very common for our sellers on the selling side to be familiarizing themselves with, their, with the HOA that they are a part of in their home, what that HOA covers as they're getting ready to transition their home to the next buyer so that they can you know, correctly educate and inform the next buyer on what comes with the HOA. And then from the buyer's perspective, we have buyers who all the time ask, well, what does this HOA include? What are the costs associated? What am I getting with this homeowners association? Yeah, so like Melissa said, it's something super common um, all across, well, at least in the US. I don't know what they're called in other countries, but um, HOAs, you'll, you'll find them all over the place. Pretty much every single condo or townhome is gonna have an HOA. Um, typically, anytime there's kind of like a shared community features whether it's like you're sharing walls or maybe there's like a pool or like a gated entry or just anything that's kind of shared between um the community pretty much there's a guarantee there's going to be an hoa that covers that yeah um the other places you also see them is in like planned developments um we joke like the little boxes on yeah, the hillside so <laughs> if, if any of you guys ever watched the show weeds the the little, little boxes, boxes on the hillside little boxes <laughs> You know, those type of communities, those are HOA communities. Yeah. And so a lot of times, um, what, you know, does an HOA cover? We get that question a lot. And I do want you guys to note that it will vary for every single planned development, every single condo community, and every single townhome. Every HOA is different. And within every homeowner association, there are uh, specific um, covenants and restrictions associated with that HOA called CCNRs. So for each HOA, there are HOA documents that show who that HOA is, who manages it, what the HOA is all about. And then there's also documents called CCNRs, which are? They are covenants, conditions, and restrictions. So they're like the rules for the community. So um, they may say things like, you know, you can't park your car in your driveway, or you can't paint your house pink or you know stuff like that or you can't have a living area in your garage it has to be for your car yeah or you can't have chickens or you know something like that it's basically gonna be the rules for the community and like Melissa said um, every community is different you know there's different um, each one will have its own different rules and stuff but there are some things that are kind of like general rules that I would say almost like the majority of all HOAs are gonna cover things like that that's gonna be things like um, like for instance, if you're in townhomes and condos, like uh, exterior building maintenance, uh, common area landscaping, um, you know, things like roof and foundation and like sewer lines and stuff like that. Kind of like, like the way you wanna think about it is like, what are you responsible for? So like if you're living in a house and you own it, like you're responsible for everything. You gotta take care of everything. But if you're living in a townhome or a condo, you know, for instance, if you've got like a hundred units in that building, like you're not responsible for the plumbing for everybody's unit. Those things are kind of shared. Um, so it's up to, you know, what's in the CCNRs, what's in the HOAs, as far as what, what that community is gonna take on as their responsibility and then what's your responsibility. Absolutely, so there, like John said, there's some things that are very standard for a lot of HOAs, like for example, limited insurance or if it's a planned community, like the road maintenance is something very common to be uh, maintained and uh, handled by the HOA. But there are some that are very, you know, that vary very dramatically from um, complex to complex or development to development. And that would be things like utilities. If utilities are included in the HOA in some communities, not only sewer and water, but in certain cases, like even cable or electricity, garbage, garbage yeah. we've seen different offerings in different HOAs. And then also, depending on the services that the HOA offers, like for the community, the community aspects of what you get when you move into that unit. For example, some condos and townhomes have awesome pools and workout centers tennis and courts. tennis courts. So depending on the complex that you're moving into, your HOA may be lower because it doesn't have any of those amenities, or it may be higher, maybe a four or $500 HOA a month, but that it may not be only including like your limited insurance and perhaps your water and your 
garbage, maybe that's also including an awesome pool, a you know a amazing gym that you no longer need a gym membership for, maybe a variety of things which then really equal out and make that 500 bucks a month very worth it for you as an individual. So different HOAs um, cover different things. And that brings me to my last point, why do they exist? So basically the HOAs are made up of the homeowners. So they're made up of the people who live within that community. So it's not like it's an outside person. You know, it's, it, it should be managed essentially by the people who have an ownership and an interest in the community and, mm -hmm. you know, want to see it succeed. And, and side note, that's what a HOA board is usually comprised of people who live within the community mm -hmm. who comprise the board. Yeah, if you if you buy a place within an HOA, um, I encourage you, you can, part you can participate in the HOA, you can attend the meetings that they have. Um, they should be having regular meetings. They talk about the budget, um, potential repairs that are coming As up, As a all homeowner, that stuff. it's great stuff to have a knowledge on. We always encourage our clients, if they even have a remote interest in getting involved in the HOA, to really dive into that because the HOA is going to dictate what happens to the community. Yeah, but what it's for is to basically maintain the community, maintain the property, the building, um, every, you know, the facilities within the community, and also to enforce the rules. Um, so those CCNRs that we were talking about, um, any other rules. And, you know, HOAs, they can get, they can get a bad rap. Like mm -hmm. a lot of people have a negative, um, kind of perception of HOAs and they're like, oh, I hate HOAs, I wanna stay away from them. And we can definitely feel that. There are some HOAs that are very, um, just have a very cumbersome as far as like yeah. a lot of rules, a lot of regulations, you may be paying a lot and not getting a lot and that's totally understandable. However, there are also awesome HOAs that take care of a lot of stuff that are really well managed, that really keep the building well run and that take a lot of you know headache and responsibility off of you. It's kind of a little bit of give and take as I kind of mentioned before, where you own a house, you're responsible for everything. Where it's awesome, you get your own house, nobody tells you what to do, all that stuff. At the same time, you're, you know, if the sewer backs up, if the roof caves in, if all, like, you're responsible. You know, sometimes condo, townhome, plan community, stuff like that, it, it, you know, yes, there is an additional cost, yes, there may be some more rules, but you also are responsible for less things. So. If it's a well-managed place and you get some awesome facilities, it may it may be something worthwhile to look look at. Yeah, I mean we have clients all the time, and really I encourage you, regardless of what market you're in, regardless of where you're shopping, if it's in San Diego, definitely hit us up. We would love to connect with you guys and really answer any questions that you have around HOAs and if you're looking at particular units or condos or townhomes and questioning whether or not the HOA is healthy or you know a good one, we tend to know a decent amount of them at this point. But one of the things that we always are looking for with our clients when we're out looking at property is it's our job as the real estate agent to really be informing our client of anything that's worrisome that we're seeing within an HOA community. For example, if the HOA on the property we're looking at is 500 bucks a month and the bushes look like they haven't been trimmed in a year, I'm going to point it out to my client and be like, you know, this HOA, we're paying 500 bucks a month and I'm not seeing what they're using that money for. But also, I've seen units where I walk in with a client and I see that it's a $250 HOA and I'm walking past amazing amenities and a beautiful pool and a workout room and I am raving about the HOA as we're looking through it because to me, the value is there and I'm seeing it and I want my client to see it too. So really, your agent should be, you know, if you're feeling... Um, like you have questions around an HOA or really what it entails and what is a good amount versus, you know, unreasonable in a certain market, definitely be reaching out to a local agent to answer those questions for you because they're all things that you should be able to have an understanding of before you're able to make an educated and informed decision on your new home. Yeah, I like that Melissa brought that up. Like serious, like a pro tip is if you guys are looking at properties with HOAs, aside from just the unit itself, whether a condo, townhome, house, whatever, look at the community what does it look like like is it being maintained does it have nice features if you're putting a lot of money towards this you should be able to see like okay this money is going to something like mm -hmm. she said if you're paying a couple hundred dollars a month and you're looking at the community and the whole place looks terrible yeah that you know that could be a red flag like okay you know maybe this is poorly managed again um anybody who's using financing during the escrow period and contingency contingency period the loan officer will also be looking into the um, the budget and the financial health of that community. So if the lender's looking... Um, or if you're a cash buyer, it's something you're going to yeah. want to look at too. It's something we're always reviewing on behalf of our clients as we're looking through the HOA docs and the 
CCNRs, the restrictions that we mentioned, um, we're always looking at the financials because there could be glaring issues on the financial statements of an HOA that are very obvious, but it is really important to be looking at what you're seeing in the community because certain, we've seen communities that have an awesome, you know, awesome line item, an awesome balance sheet. It seems like they've got fantastic financials and then we'll go to the community and it looks like the community hasn't been, you know, like cleaned or maintained in months. So you really want to make sure that your money's working for you in an HOA because there can be some amazing benefits that come from having a property within an HOA. You have a lot less maintenance and a lot less overhead a lot of times for big ticket items within your house. But you just want to make sure that the money's being utilized properly. Yeah, they should definitely, they should have a healthy budget because the last thing you want to do is move into a place and get hit with like a special assessment you know, which, a five thousand, ten thousand dollar cost that like just hits you out of nowhere because. Which you know, we're going to be talking on about special assessments on our next video. Yeah. Get real with real estate. So tune in in just a couple of days. We'll be coming at you with what is a special assessment and that has to do with HOAs. So looking forward to hearing from you guys. Definitely let us know if you have any questions. Smash that like button. We would love to hear from you and get some love. And we will talk to you guys soon. Hope this was informative and helpful. Bye. Thanks, guys.